Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I am Farron, your fashion guru, and today we're talking about the 10 most important tips before you cut your plaid and stripe fabric. We're gonna dive deep and determine what the difference is between even plaids, uneven plaids, one directional, non-directional, how to match your seams when you're sewing. Let's go discover the wonderful world of plaids and stripes because, you know, I dressed for it. So this is my fashion studio. My name is Farron. So let's get right into it with number one. The most important goal of picking a plaid and stripe is a harmonious effect. So picking a fabric that doesn't distract the eye. Also picking a style that doesn't have too many seams. Unless you're Vivian Westwood, uh, you can break all those rules. So number two, if your style is very complicated with seams, you may want to consider changing up your fabric or changing up your style. Oftentimes your pattern envelope will say on the back, not suitable for prints, plaids, and obvious diagonals. That is important to note. Like this very obvious stripe is completely different to something like this, which is not so obvious, but it is still a stripe. It's also kind of a plaid too. It's not distracting at all, is it? On to number three. When you're buying plaids and stripes, make sure to buy extra yardage. I would say half meter is a good safe bet. Number four, if you're buying a printed plaid, it is much different than a woven plaid because the printed plaid could be just printed on top of the fabric and it could possibly be printed off grain. This could be complicated for you later on if you're trying to match your plaids it could be off grain like this one you can see that it is just white on the other side and there was a problem with this grain line which is why my pants got skewed around the leg so just take note of that when you're buying your plaids and stripes when they're woven they're the same on both sides Number five, we need to talk about at the cutting table. So I'm gonna gather all my fabrics and I'll meet you there. La, 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 la. All right, and we're back. Placement matters when it comes to bold focal lines. What do I mean by this? I mean finding the focal point, the bold line that sits out in front of you and screams, hi, I'm a plaid. <laughs> In order to find that bold focal point, you need to blur your eyes a little bit. We can try that now, right? What do you see by blurring your eyes into this fabric? Obviously, it's going to be the red center line, no? So most likely, when you're placing your pattern, you want to have the red center line of this plaid down the center front or the center back. Dominant parts of the fabric. Well, we've basically just talked about that in bold focal points. If you have a bold stripe or something on your fabric like this, this, okay, is not a plaid or a stripe, I get it, but it does have a border on the bottom and most likely you want to have this at the hemline or even vertically down the center of the body. If your plaid or stripe is smaller than a half inch, that goes for like things like gingham, okay? Like little small Dixie prints and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about these rules of matching because it's not such an obvious stripe or plaid. I'm kind of making a mess here, so bear with me. Number seven is all about determining if your fabric is directional. What? The heck do you mean, Farron? Does it have a nap? Is it have, does it have a pile like velvet? Or is it a brocade, a satin, or like this? This is, this is actually a silk taffeta. When it's a satin, it shades. You can tell by looking at your fabric in the light one way, and then again, the other way. And you can tell that one way it's lighter and the other way is darker. This is the same for velvet. 
So my suggestion is to follow your pattern instructions for cutting with nap because that means that they would be placed all the same way when you're cutting out. That's a good tip right there. Next, does your fabric have a right and left direction? And if so, you're going to have to cut your pattern going all the way around the body so it doesn't look weird. A good example of this would be if your plaid has some sort of like print inside of it, um, like a heart as a design or like a fish or I have no idea. You just look at your fabric and if it's going to the right, then you cut all of your pieces going to the right and it needs to go around the body counterclockwise. If it's going to the left, then you cut all your pieces going around the body clockwise. If your plaid doesn't repeat in an orderly sequence, like if it repeats five bars down, you may want to cut it in a directional way. That's a good example. Yeah, uh, next is number nine. Even versus uneven, and then we have balanced versus unbalanced. The even uneven refers to plaids, and the balanced unbalanced refers to stripes. For example, this would be considered an even plaid. If your plaid is, is a, a square, you can think of it as being an even plaid. If it is a rectangle from focal point to bold focal point, then it would be an uneven plaid. There is a way to figure this out. Let's go back to the taffeta and I'll show you an easy technique if you have no idea. Fold your fabric on a bold focal point, okay? So we're folding that widthwise. We have to do this the other way too as well, so. I have folded my piece in the center of the bold focal point and I'm folding it widthwise right now. So what I do is I take the corner and I just fold it up to match the other lines here. You know, it looks like it could be an even plaid, but it's tricky because this doesn't match up with this line. So technically this should be a gold line here matching up. So what you can do also is fold it lengthwise as well and check that. I folded it lengthwise to check the lengthwise grain. We're getting the same results here. So this would be still considered an uneven plaid because this gold stripe is not repeating and therefore you may need more yardage for this particular plaid. If this was repeating, then we would have an even plaid and I will show you what an even plaid looks like. So I folded my fabric on the bold focal point, which I picked was the gray stripe. And now you just take one of your corners and you fold it down, matching up your blue line. Does it match? Does it match? And it matches. See how it continues the pattern? So you'll have no problem cutting this. So that means that the arrangement, when you're arranging your pattern pieces, it doesn't really matter. It only matters when you're lining up your hemline. You're matching your bold focal point to the hem fold and not the cut edge. When you're cutting out your pieces, you match your general lines on the side seams, like your notches, and use those indications to help you out when you're placing out your pattern. Place it on the bold focal point in order to help you place out all your pieces correctly. Moving on, let's talk about stripes. Balanced, unbalanced, what does this all mean? A balanced stripe is just something that repeats. This is a balanced stripe. You can put this anywhere. If this was bigger, then, you know, like I said, bold focal points go down the center front. There has been some debate that you put the bold focal point on the shoulder points, that is really up to you. Normally, you want the bold focal point going down the center front or the center back. If you're cutting a horizontal stripe, so you don't have any bold focal point, okay, what do you do? You use one of the bold focal points as your hem line. Again, the hem fold line. 
not the cut line. Same goes for something like this that is tonal. Placing your stripe either horizontal or vertical makes a difference. When it's a balanced stripe, it doesn't really matter where you're placing your stripe or where you're placing your pattern pieces. If it's a vertical stripe like this, like the pants that I made, this would follow the grain line of your pattern piece, which is super simple. And if you have a bold print, really big thick stripe, you'd want the bold focal point going down the center as we talked about before. On to the unbalanced stripe. Unfortunately, I don't have an example of an unbalanced stripe, but here is some picture examples here and here. What you would do is, do you want your stripes going vertically or horizontally? That makes a difference. If you're going horizontally, the center dominant stripe again, would be placed at the hem fold. And you would also use the cut with nap layout from your pattern instructions. If you're going vertically for an unbalanced stripe, make sure that your stripe is going around the body. That's all you need to know about that. That one was a really long one. Sorry about that, but not sorry because we covered a lot of stuff. All right, number 10 is a pretty easy one and I kind of already discussed it in a couple other points, but I just have to make this very clear. When you are placing your pattern pieces down, you have to make sure that your plaids are matching on the seam line and not the cut line. This is basically just to make sure that your pattern pieces, when you're going to actually sew, that the plaid is going to match when you're sewing together and not the cut line. Because you're not sewing the cut line together, you're sewing the seam line. Duh! That was a lot of information, I know. If you found value in what I was saying, please hit that like button, like, thumbs up, whatever. What? Let me know in the comments below which one of these tips was new to you. If you have any tips for me, let me know. I would love to hear from you. Next week, we're gonna be putting these tips into action and actually cutting out something from a plan. So stay tuned for next week. Hit that notification bell. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you for being here. I'm gonna see you later. Bye. What? Whatever. This is your fashion guru signing off. Bye. Bye. Bye.